Hi there, my name is Jeff Sackman. I am the author of several GMAT textbooks, including Total GMAT Math, and I run a website called gmathacks.com. What I want to talk to you about today is prime factorization. On the GMAT Math section, there's a lot of questions having to do with properties of numbers, primes, even evens and odds, um, multiples, factors, and so on. What all of this has to do with is how numbers relate to each other and how numbers relate to prime numbers. Now, I've, I've recorded another video about identifying prime numbers and the difference between primes and composites, so I'm going to assume that you have a decent grounding in just what prime numbers are. But prime factorization is the next step beyond that. So with prime factorization, what we're doing is we're taking any number and we're identifying what the prime factors are and what role the prime factors play in that number. So for instance, let's take a number like 12. 12 is not prime because, for instance, it's, it's even, it's divisible by 2, and since it's divisible by something other than 1 in itself, it's not prime. And 12, we can get there by multiplying 2 times 2 times 3. 2 is a prime, 2 again is a prime, 3 is a prime, multiply these together, you get 12. So the prime factorization of 12 is two twos and a three. And often we'll write this in exponent form. So we have twos, we have threes, we know how many twos, and we know how many, one, how many threes. There's just the one three. We can do that for any number. Now, some numbers are more difficult than others, and that's where prime factorization comes in. A number like 12 or 14 or 15, they're small numbers, you've probably worked with them a lot. You don't really need to come up with any fancy method for identifying the prime factors. But as numbers get bigger, for a lot of GMAT questions, you're gonna need to identify what the prime factors are, and in some cases, what this exponent is, how many times that prime factor shows up in the factorization of a number. So what I want to show you how to do is a method called a factor tree, and that's a way of breaking down a prime factorization into individual steps that make it a lot easier to get from a big number to the smaller prime factors. So let's take an example that I've seen on the GMAT a few times, a number like 225. Now, you might know that 225 is 15 squared. If you don't, that's totally fine. It's a common number for that reason, because it's a perfect square and because it has a lot of small prime factors, as we'll see. So what we're gonna do, is the first step, is just identify any prime, really any number, doesn't even have to be a prime, that 225 is div divisible by. Now, just looking at 225, we can see the last digit is a five. Since the last digit is a five, it's gotta be divisible by five. So what we're gonna do, this is where the, the tree metaphor comes in, put a couple lines there, we're gonna factor out a five. So just skipping a step here, since you can do the division on your own time, 225 divided by five is 45. So what this, tr this tree metaphor means is 225 is made up of five times 45. Five times 45 is 225. Now five, as I mentioned before, is a prime. We know it's a factor of 225, we've got it in the tree. Because it's a prime, we're gonna circle it. We're not gonna break that down any further. Because it's prime, we can't break it down any further. Five is just one times five. That's the only way you can get there with integers. So 45, on the other hand, is not a prime number. So what is 45 div divisible by? Again, you're ending with a five, so we can break it down into five, and nine. Five, as we know, is a prime. Nine is not a prime. And you probably know what nine is divisible by. Nine is made up of three and three. Three are, is prime, so we can circle those two. And we've got two threes and two fives. So if we write it in the format I showed you a couple minutes ago, 225 is equal to three squared times five squared. That's it. That's a prime factorization. You now know what the prime numbers are that make up 225 and how many times they arise in the prime factorization of 225. Prime factorization is a very important skill in things like calculating the least common multiple, which is common on the GMAT, even if the GMAT doesn't explicitly use the term least common multiple, and a lot of sort of made up tactics that the GMAT uses to test your understanding of properties of numbers. 
So at some point during the GMAT, you will need to do a prime factorization. Whether you use a tree or do it in your head because you're really good at this stuff, doesn't matter. But if you find a difficult number, you're likely to need to use this tree. One further note is that the GMAT loves numbers that are fairly small. And as the numbers get bigger on the GMAT, because they know you're working with pen and paper, you don't get a calculator, the bigger numbers are going to be made up of smaller numbers. So it's more likely that you're gonna get a number like 225, which breaks down to three, three, five, and five, than some number that breaks down to 13 times 19 times 23. The people who write the GMAT, like I said, they know you don't have a calculator, so they don't think you're gonna just automatically see that some number is divisible by 23 and also divisible by 19. So as you get to bigger numbers, you can usually count on the fact that they're divisible by two or three or five, maybe occasionally by seven, very occasionally by 11 or 13, but usually the two, the threes, the fives, and occasionally the sevens, those are all the prime factors you need. So if you don't recognize a big number, start by just checking whether it's even, whether it's divisible by three, maybe it's divisible by seven, so that you don't go through the process of checking 13, 17, 19, some of the more unwieldy, larger prime numbers that you really don't wanna spend the time to divide by. So prime factorizations, the goal is to get us from a big number down to the smaller prime numbers that constitute that bigger number. Like I've been trying to share, three squared times five squared, three times three times five times five is the same as 225, just written as, as a different way. When we move on to further steps, like least common multiple, three squared times five squared will be a much more useful format for that number than something larger and unwieldy like 225. So check back for further videos on topics like least common multiple so you can see this sort of step put into action in something more like a realistic GMAT question. And for more GMAT math tips, not only have I recorded some other videos, but there's a good several dozen articles helping you through the GMAT math section, all free on gmathacks.com. See you next time.